Hey everyone, welcome back to the Forge of Sagas. In this video, I'm going to show you all how I made my 2022 Armies on Parade display board. Over the course of this video, I am not only going to talk about the crafting of it, but I'm also going to give you guys some insights into what I was thinking while I was designing and putting the board together. So without further ado, let's get started. I started by cutting out a 2x2 two two square of cardboard, and then started laying out the scene that I had in my head. I figured I could use the Sector Imperialis Ruins as the center of the board, and then surround them with my new Chaos Knights. Eventually I would choose one of my Imperial armies and have them making a sort of last stand within the building. I always like to do a bit of a scene when I'm laying out my boards, as I think it draws the eye a little bit, gives people a sense of story, and distracts them a little bit if I've made any small painting mistakes. However, then my printer finished printing something, and that gave me a different idea that would end up being the final product. The thing I was working on were these ruined kind of imperial fortress walls, and you know, I thought that, ooh, what if I had my knights breaching through the walls instead? That would make for a cool scene indeed. So I decided that I would add these to the board and try the layout again. So I pulled back the imperial ruins to make room for the walls at the edge of the board as I figured that would make a nice backdrop for the entire affair. Once I had my walls in place, I centered my Centaur Knight in the back as it's kind of the centerpiece of my entire Chaos Knights army, and then started laying out the other large-scale knights. I then shifted the buildings all the way to the outside just to make sure those big knights would be visible on the final board from a variety of angles. Then I started placing some of my custodies as that's my newest Imperial Force, and I figured they would look good facing off against the horrors that are the Chaos Knights. They are, after all, the Imperium's finest. The main goal of this step is just to figure out where the buildings need to be at the end of the day, as that's going to be the most important bit of information for the next step in crafting this display board. Once I was happy with the position of the Imperial Ruins, I came in and marked out the interior edges with a marker. This is going to help me remember where these buildings actually sit when I'm going in and making the floor that's going to go under them. To create a kind of tile floor for my Imperial Ruins, I decided to try using some air dry clay. This is why I traced out the floor of the ruins so that the floor wouldn't extend beyond the walls. This stuff had been in that plastic bag for a while, and it was really a pain to work with without getting it really wet, but once it was rehydrated, it spread out pretty smoothly. I'm not looking to cover the entirety of this half of the board with the air dry clay, as I want some space to put in a little bit of sand and rubble later, but I still wanted to get good coverage so that we can definitely tell that this is the inside of the building versus the outside of the building that's going to be near the walls. Once I was happy with the coverage, I came in with two metal rulers and used one as a size gauge while I used the other to press tile lines into the air dry clay. I went with two inch squares as that's about the same size as the roof tiles on the Sector Imperialis ruins. Once I'd carved in the majority of the lines, I came in and did a little bit of cleanup with some metal sculpting tools, just to help really make sure those tiles were nice and sharp, and that they all looked really nice. Then I left the air dry clay to dry overnight, and came back to it the next day. Once the clay was dry, I came in and began to add a layer of white PVA glue to all of the surfaces that didn't have air dry clay. Once I'd covered the entire piece of cardboard and PVA glue, it was time to add some sand. Since my Imperial Ruins have a sandstone color as the base, I figured that a desert board would make the most sense. It also works very well with all of my Imperial Armies, given that they generally have an Egyptian theme. You don't have to be particularly careful when you're applying the sand, but just make sure that you get good coverage. I left the glue to dry overnight, and then in the morning when I was ready, I came in with a brush and brushed off any of the excess sand. After that, I can collect it all and it goes right back in my sandbox for future use. I then hit the board with a paint and primer combo just to help give myself a nice unified base tone to start with. I wanted the tone of the sand to be a little bit darker than the buildings in order to provide a little contrast, so I started brushing on a little bit of a darker tan onto the sand just to give it another darker color. I'm using a makeup brush here just because I find that it doesn't disturb the sand too much and it overall just gives a really nice effect when using a dry brushing technique like this. Once I was happy with that, I came in with a little bit of terracotta orange, again just to give a little bit more variety in color and a little bit more texture. These two darker coats are going to form a really nice base for us to build back up to a more natural sand color. 
By the way, all the paints I'm using for this board are 99 cent craft store paints, as they're just really simple to work with, and they're really efficient for working on something of this size. Next, I'm going to come in with a more traditional sandy color and apply that using the same dry brushing method you've seen in the past few clips. This color is just going to help restore some of the brightness to the sand, like it is actually under the sun of a bright desert world. Lastly, I'm just going to come in with a very light tan, and this is just going to help add a couple of little bright spots, really pick out the highlights, and just add that final little bit of texture to the overall color scheme. For the tiles, I decided to go with a much brighter cream color, as that's going to help it really blend in with my Sector Imperialis ruins. I really like using a stippling technique with makeup brushes, as it gives a really nice amount of coverage, while still letting some of the tone from the undercoat shine through, which is going to help give our tiles a little bit of that aged, worn feel, as they should, given that they're in the middle of a ruin right now. Once I was happy with the color, I came in with a slightly darker cream and just painted that into the lines between the tiles to help the tiles stand out a little more. Originally I tried doing this with a brown wash, but that came out way too dark. Once everything had dried, it was just time to do a final test with my Sector Imperialis runes just to make sure that everything lined up how I thought it was going to. I wanted to make sure that the color scheme worked nicely together, but also just to triple check at this last minute if I needed to add any more air dry clay or sand to help the look come together a little bit more. But everything turned out to be good, so now it's time to get some models on there. I started with the knights as they are kind of the big centerpiece and also the biggest models. I started with my centaur knight abominant in the back as he is my favorite, and then I put in the headsman who is the first knight that I ever did for Chaos Knights. After that, I came in on the other side to kind of make a mirror with my big rusty knight who is yet to be named and who will have his own painting tutorial coming out in the future, and then finished off with three of my war dogs. The rock crawler, the herald of corn, and the hound of Abaddon. And then it was time to start adding the custodies to the mix. I set up two of my contemptors facing off against the front two armatures, as I felt like that created a really cool scene. On the top of this building, I came in with one of my guardians, as well as an Inquisitor and the Vaxilla, where he could command the forces of the Custodes. In the other part of the command, I came down here and put down my shield captain, as well as two guardians with shields, who would be his bodyguards as they charged towards the knights. Then on the other side, I deposited two of my guardians with spears. Lastly, I came up and added to the top of this empty building another guy with a spear just to help fill the space out. Lastly, I put in my blade champion charging down the wall to face off against the Knight Abominant. And that's really all there is to it. This board ended up letting me take home both the gold in the 40k category as well as the overall store championship trophy. I really think the best thing about designing armies on parade boards for me is trying to tell that story and set up little things within the board that have their own little significance, like here we have the Galatus Dreadnought facing off against the Hound of Abaddon as it reaches towards him, or the Blade Champion racing down the wall, or any of the other little scenes that I created. I think this is really important to getting that higher caliber of board and really drawing people's attention. It does pretty well for me in my local gaming shops, and I always find that it's a really fun end of the year hobby project. I hope this little video has given you all some inspiration for upcoming display boards and competitions that you might have, and I hope to see you all again this time next year for Armies on Parade 2023, which I promise to be a little bit more on top of. If you guys like this video, give us a like and subscribe to the channel to keep up on all of our future content. If there's anything you'd like to see me tackle or any questions you have, Leave them in the comments and I'll get back to you. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you again the next time we ignite the Forge of Sagas.